Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a very nice and early and a very safe and safu Saturday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. It's nice and bright outside, so I do want to be wishing well. I do want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest, as we say. And let's get on to some good old magic internet money analysis. As Bitcoin's done very little in the overnight session, but with doing very little, it's actually told us quite a bit because as we, as, as we were looking at yesterday, the longer that Bitcoin kind of remains in this range without breaking the support, that critical support of around 39.50, it does offer up the potential that this just turns into a bear trap, and over the weekend we get to float on onwards and upwards. So yes, this was a bearish engulfing dildo, but no follow through, no actual breakage. While all of the oscillators, while all the indicators were suggesting probably some fall through to the downside, we have not seen that. And of course, that is why price action is the most important because you know if you are going to be, or sorry, if if, if I'm going to be taking trades before actual price action confirms, well, this is just going to you know turn into an unnecessary an, an unnecessary loss. Anyways, with the way that it's situated right now on the daily, as long as we're kind of riding this red tens and moving average to the upside, I would be I would be actually looking for some more upside. We are flirting around with that critical four thousand resistance as well, so technically it has not been broken officially just yet. But going over uh, going over here to the twelve hour which I believe has gotten price action pretty damn right as well. Uh, I would be using the 200 uh, exponential moving average to ma to to manage uh, trace the upside on. So as long as we are, I mean, technically we are, we are still closing below it, but right now we are currently above it by about a few bucks. It's current, it's uh, it's coming in right around officially at 39.94. If we can actually close above it, then I would be looking for another run towards the prior high, right around uh, 40, 60, 40, 70, whatever it might be. And then you know, realistically speaking, probably get another full run towards the prior high if that were to happen. Now, of course, it is a weekend, so I don't really, I, I don't take trades during the weekends. I will be constructing an options position, which I've been showing, um, you know, the the uh, the one from the past week already expired. So I'm working on a new one. Uh, we'll be shorting the 4,000 uh, puts to put on a position and, um, and essentially, yeah, I, I, I will hammer, I will hammer those if we actually, uh, can print above the 4,000 level, very easy trade to manage, very easy, very easy on the soul as well as, uh, Bitcoin's just been, you know, trading a range for the most part for the past few weeks. So in, instead of just looking for these directional trades, you doing it with options has been a lot more, um, a lot more relaxing. I'll put it that way. And also quite profitable as well, although not as, not as sexy as, you know, as, as grabbing a major move, but you got to work with what you're given as, especially as a trader, there's not always going to be major moves to be had. Uh, for right now, Bitcoin, I would consider this still consolidation, even on the lower time frames. We go over here to the four hour, I'll put on the drawing tools. You can see that we are still holding in this rising wedge formation. So if we were to take off to the upside, if we were to actually to confirm above this 4,000 level, then I would be looking for, uh, I would be looking for initial resistance right at the top side of this guy, which would be, yeah, right around that 40, 60, 40, 70 ish level. Um, if it does break above there, then I'd look for the full move on to 4150, 4120, 4150, which is going to start to come into confluence with the weekly 200 exponential. So going over here to the weekly, I do want to be cognizant of this because that will be, that has been the major resistance that is for the past uh, four or five months, going all the way back to late November, getting one, two, three, four, and potentially working on a fifth high. And as long as we are closing dildos below that, I do just consider this whole formation to be one massive consolidation for the last four or five months with the more recent price action being rather constructive, but the whole formation being rather corrective. So again, this is what makes it very difficult in an overall downtrend looking for, uh, you know, ju uh, judging that next high. It's a lot easier to get lows and highs just in, in, in my experience. But more importantly, you know, if you are on these higher time frames, if you are kind of a more of a long term thinker, and this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. But what I can say is that uh, as long as we are above the pink 200 simple moving average and below the purple 200 exponential moving average, very little from a macro time frame perspective that has actually, you know, occurred. If we could both open and close a weekly dildo above this purple 200 exponential moving average right here, I would be looking for a very extended run into the 4,000. 4,500 becomes an extreme likelihood at that point, and, uh, and even 4,700, 4,800 becomes you know a, a, a reasonable possibility as well. By the same token, uh, if we were to break out the 3,400 support to the downside, that 200 some moon average, this pink moon average right here, we'd be looking for the full move down to about 2,500 to low 2,000s-ish area. Um, putting on our drawing tools, there's actually a significant amount of confluences right, right around that area. And uh, with this current posturing of the charts, I actually do kind of uh, lean towards that overall happening but hey 
you know, at the end of the day, I won't take that trade. More importantly, I will not take that trade until we actually break the 200 symbol to the downside. You know, I can have all my opinions as a trader, um, but when it comes down to actually, sorry, I can have all my opinions as an analyst, but when it comes down to being a trader and having accountability, you know, AKA my account's, my, my account's gonna live and die. Um, you know, I need to, I, I, I would have to wait for that. So I hope that that has been rather clear over the past few months as, as long as we are riding the 200 symbol moon average to the upside, don't want to be too damn bearish looking for that next leg down. However, if and when it does break, which my opinion does say that over time probably does happen, but that could be months and months away. I mean, that, I mean, shit, man, that could be another like four or five months. Um, then, then I'd be looking for that actual trade of the downside and I'd be looking for somewhere in this blue box territory between about 2,300 and 2,600 also marked off by these historical horizontal trend lines coming in all the way back from June of 2017. One of the times that China banned Bitcoin. We also do have the eight six Fibonacci tracement, uh, uh, coming in this area as well, which is, which is, actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, 2015 mark cycle right over here. And if we go over to the BLX index, you will see that uh, we do have the 377 exponential on the uh, on the weekly coming in right around that area. And more importantly, the monthly um, 89 exponential is coming in right around 2500 as well. So significant amounts of confluences within that area. In fact, we could even find a little bit more if you really, if you really want to go through the dregs of it, uh, putting on the volume profile, you'll notice, oh man, why is it doing it's passing out on me? Do you see that? <laughs> that is rather annoying. There we go. Uh, you will notice that on the volume profile, the second that that 3,400 high value note is lost, there's nothing doing, no business being done all the way down to mid to low 2000s right here. Very similar to what we saw at the 6,000 level. I mean, if you even want to take it one step further, we could maybe get that off, put on some Trollinger bands. Oh, you bastard. Don't do this. Why? Why are you doing this? That is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is unreal this is fucking unreal can you please stop there we go okay yeah we'll put on the trollinger bands on the weekly uh we are right at the median skid line band for the trollingers and if you're not familiar with how to use the trollingers i'm not a huge fan of them i'm not you know it's it's certainly not my first port of call but it is something that i pay attention to as it has been working for the past uh, over a year and each and every time that we've popped up and tested this 20 simple moon average the skid mark colored uh, median line going all the way through here that has called major tops for again uh well over a year now uh going back towards late january of 2018 more importantly, we are right there right now. And if you're not familiar with the Trollinger Bands, I need to see both an open and close above this in order for me to get uh, me, me to look at this in a more bullish way. And again, it's you know kind of coming into confluence with the 200 exponential on the weekly. So I do like this area for resistance overall. Also kind of gathering our last few highs, one, two, three, four, um, and perhaps working on a fifth. So whether we, you know, if Bitcoin does close above the, the, uh, the, uh, the medium band right here, which is currently 3950, which also aligns with that with that very important support that we've been looking at. Um, <clears throat> if it actually does close above, does that necessarily negate it just yet? No, it does not. We need to both open and close above. We saw a close above right here on the bull trap to 8400, and that was quickly negated on the next uh, weekly dildo. So that's why it's very important if you're you know if you're trading trolling advance to actually wait for it. Of course, not fin not financial advice, but. Uh, if I were trading this, you know, I'd want to really be cognizant of where this ends by the end of the, you know, uh, by the end of the, by the end of the week, which is tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If we do end below the median band, which again is 39.50, that would also not just be, I would not, I would not just consider that a rejection of this area. I'd also consider it a, I would also consider a breakdown of the formations that we saw in the lower time frames, and more importantly, that would suggest another test of the lower band is in order. And guess where that's coming in around? Another confluence right around that 2,500 number. So. Again, it's going to be absolutely critical to see where we actually close this week. Um, for right now, because Bitcoin has been so resilient, I would be more I'd be more neutral than anything um, until we actually get. Let me take this off until we actually see 39.50 break to the downside. Or I suppose because this trend line is rising, we could we could maybe even goose that up to 39.80 now, uh, as it does get ever so high. Um, but still holding and we do see all of our low time frames, low to medium time frame also to start to switch around. We got four hour stokes up, three hour stokes uh, have been heading up for quite some time. Uh, five hour stokes up, six hour stokes also going to be crossing the upside on the next tick. What about the eight hours? Eight hours are still down. So the eight to 12 hours are going to all be down. Sorry, eight to daily is going to be down. Um, daily looking a little bit weak, a little bit of anemic, but Again, uh, I would not be front running any sort of decisions within this area until 39. It, it, I mean, really, I want to see 3950 break. But yes, you could make the decision at 3980, I suppose. Although I really dislike uh, rising wedges. I, re I really dislike wedges of all shapes and sizes. It would have a measure move to be made somewhere down around uh, somewhere down around actually 3800 ish area. Um, a lot of the times, so I will I will not see those met actually. Uh, funnily enough, so. 
for right now bitcoin still right in this area up you do see the 89 exponential coming in right around where right around that critical 3900 or sorry 3950 ish area you'll see the 21 exponential start to crawl its way up and it's going to be right around uh, 39 uh, 20 ish area which also very important just this whole kind of thickness of support as long as bitcoin's above there you know it could very it could very easily reaccumulate and you know try higher the second that we start breaking these more important levels is the second that i start getting a little bit more bearish looking for a move down as we just spoke about to low 3800 um also do have to keep in mind where cme's closed on friday which they closed at 39.65 so depend so really my next trade with spot is going to be dependent upon where spot is in relation to cmes when they open up tomorrow at 8 p.m east or sorry 7 p.m eastern eastern standard time if we if spot is trading above then i'll probably be a buyer on the gap fill uh and i'll be looking for a retest of uh, 39.65 39.70 ish area uh, by the same token if if spot is trading below uh 39.65 i'd be looking to be a seller a massive seller because then this would start to look a lot more like a reversal as uh this is a bearish engulfing total right here on pretty low volume um and we'd actually have follow through we'd be coming back down to fill the gap twice which is not not the kind of gaps that you want to be buying or at least in my experience typically not um and more importantly if this thing actually did break back down below this declining trend line that had been governing all of the highs uh, since late November, one, two, three, four, five, if it actually breaks back down below that, that would be a failure. And to me, that would be incredibly, incredibly bearish, not just inciting a move down to 3,800, but likely all the way down to 3,650. And at that point in time, I'd be looking for, you know, personally speaking, I'd be looking for the move down to the low side of the range, uh, right around 35, 3450 ish area, which is going to be coming into confluence with what? With the 200 simple on the weekly which is also governed by this rising trend line uh governing the lows so it is of very critical importance what happens in the next uh, uh, over this weekend because I would imagine that uh, looking at CMEs, it does look like CMEs do want down. Uh, CME uh, Stokes getting way up there. This has been damn good at calling tops for the past uh, over a year, getting all of the beautiful tops from uh, from 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 the bull trap to 10,000, the bull trap to 8,400, the bull trap to 7,400. Um, and once again, kind of uh, signaling a little bit of weakness in this area as we do put in a bearish engulfing dildo without any follow through. So if I was just looking at CMEs, I would be thinking a little bit more to the downside. We also do have some bearish divergence as well. But uh, in the meantime, could it be that we have another hunt over the weekend for Bitcoin? Do we have another move up into the 4000s, trap some more longs and then move down? Very possible. Very fucking possible. Um, so that's kind of why I want to be interrelating all these things, because I do believe that the CME charts are more accurate. I believe that they get price action better and if i had to pick one chart to trade i would trade the cmes even though i trade on an exchange like deribit anyways i completely forgot to talk about this all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month which is another actually not that long uh what like seven days six seven days um with the code year 20 as you see flash down below there let's actually go to it right now Oops, uh, wrong thing. There we go. Right now over here. Um, and these, you know, you can find it on the Discord. Basically, uh, all the programs with all of the payment plans are on sale. 20% uh, off um, with the code year 20. Uh, what else do I want to say about it? Uh, make sure that you take advantage of all my free content before you ever think of investing in any one of these things. They are 35 hours plus long for both the uh, Trade Like Professional program, which is uh, technical analysis plus uh, pl um, pl Jesus Christ, man. Technical analysis plus trading strategies plus position management plus risk management plus understanding underlying market dynamics plus a <laughs> bunch of bonus modules plus a couple of proprietary indicators plus access to the hidden members Discord community. Um, that's a 35 hour plus long program. Uh, same thing with the master your options program, just with regards to options. And then the jewel indicators are just access to indicators, nothing else. So do you want to be very clear about that so there's no confusion? Um, and like I said, please, 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 I I beg you to take advantage of my free content first. I have literally over a thousand hours of, of free content on YouTube and and actual dedicated playlist towards learning technical analysis that I would really suggest, um, you know, look at those first before going into a program like that. Those programs are designed for people who really want to do this in a more serious uh, venue as, as a living. I'm just noticing right now that my uh, screen, I'm actually covering up some of the numbers. So let me see if I I can just move this over ever so slightly so we can get a better visual. There we go. I think that works a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, uh, Streamlabs actually updated and not working too well. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so yeah, with all those programs, they're designed for people who want to do this as a living. So again, if that doesn't sound like you, then it's probably not a good fit. So I'll, I'll let you be the arbiter of that. Of course, not everyone who takes the programs is going to be a trader or, or, or wants to be a trader, but 
you know, I want to make sure that the people who are joining into the into the Discord uh, members community that they're kind of you know from the same sort of integrity, and uh, and that's you know that's that's very important. As I'm I'm a strong believer in that saying, you are the average of the five people that you hang around the most with. Or as Dan Pena says, he says, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So want to make sure that that sort of integrity of the groups uh, stays. Anyways, back onto the fucking charts. My God, man. Um, let's talk about uh, this rising wedge right here. So you know, over the weekend. Like I said, with CMEs looking and closing the way that they did on Friday night, uh, I would be very, like I said, I will not trade any sort of spot um, right now, but I will be trading the options and I'd be happy to actually sell those 4,000 puts if we do confirm above 4,000. Um, and that becomes very easy to manage because if we break back down below 4,000, then sell some, uh, sell some spot against it and probably a damn good trade to be had. You can see that we do have a nice trend line coming in right from here, leading, on, uh, leading into that former uh, swing failure pattern right, uh, right here that we got. We're basically coming back and retesting this area, uh, which comes again right around right around that four thousand level. Like I said, if you want to make it easy on yourself, I'd be using the twelve hour two hundred exponential to, to kind of manage trades upon. But all lower time frames uh, do say up right now, and I would be looking at this um, and 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 I would be looking at this as more of a bear hunt, and sorry, a bear trap as long as thirty nine you know seventy a share doesn't break. Uh, if 39.50 area breaks, no questions asked. Definitely not a bear trap. Definitely likely moving further down, uh, like I said, to 3,800. And then if I'm looking at CMEs, I'm thinking much lower than that. Uh, to the low side of the range, 3,400. Then the month starts to come in, you know, come into contact. So overall, uh, during this weekend, you know, uh, what I really want to say is that <clears throat> this is why I don't like trading over the weekend um, because... When you have that divergence in price from um, from from CMEs and 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 then the spot kind of takes over, like our spot exchanges like Binance, Bitfinex, uh, Coinbase, uh, you know, Bit uh, Bit Mexico, all these sorts of different things. You can see all sorts of crazy, flighty, floaty price action. You saw it a few weeks ago, right over here, where over the weekend it took off to the upside, and then literally right as CMEs opened, it was a massive red dildo party for the rest of the day, shoving it all the way back down. So that's why I want to be very safe right now as uh, the 200 exponential, which has, again, been getting all of the recent highs, is coming in right around 4,100. I'd even consider the last up to be a test of it. I mean, it's close enough, and especially on a weekly total time frame, close enough is close enough. So looking at this, uh, if we did actually get back around there, I probably would I probably would take a trade or at the very least spread. You know, I'd, I'd be looking to put on the 4,000, uh, 4,125 spread most likely, maybe the 37, uh, 30, uh, 38, 75, although that's pretty much all premium right now. Those are not going to help. The time spread is probably going to be the best idea to do. So, you know, uh, sell sell the front month by the, uh, 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 by the back month, which is um, 5th of April, expiry. Yeah, and these actually have some good premium on them. So not too bad. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, decent setup, actually, quite, uh, quite decent right now. So <clears throat> that'll be my initial t uh, tentative plan. Again, just sharing what I'm doing. Of course, understand my perspectives as a um, you know as a, as a trader, and uh, it's you know might not be appropriate for everyone. You know, I'm more I'm I'm more of like a short term day trader, with that kind of stuff. And in, in options is something that I feel a lot more comfortable with. Anyways, uh, let's see what our RSI is saying, our, our saying on the weekly. Again, I, I am very put off by the RSI on the weekly just because the RSI is floating up. It's, it's pretty much vertical right now um, or has been for the past few weeks while price action has really been flat. Yes, we have been floating up, but more, but more importantly to me, I want to see Bitcoin break a major resistance if I'm going to really start to be a believer uh, that the lows are in. And I'll actually present something a little bit later that says that the lows are in. Um, <clears throat> but my point is, is that I'm in no rush. I'm in no real rush. And uh, with the RSI kind of floating up like this, it does make me very apprehensive. I, I'm not an RSI first type of guy, but the RSI first type of guys will tell you that this is quite a bearish setup with the RSI as price action has not broken a major resistance. And we're kind of floating up towards the, se towards the same resist or sorry, towards the same support that we had in uh, July, uh, August, October, all the way to November uh, before we broke down from 6,000 to 3,000. And that creates you know a resistance trend line now and i'd imagine that if we did retest it that's probably going to sell off pretty damn hard could we test it on a move to 4100 very possible extremely possible um i think it would, might take a little bit more than that 4150 something like that would kind of make sense but you know if we did come back and, and retest this area i'd imagine on the first pass probably does sell and then we come back down to test the exponential somewhere right around here and that's going to be the real tell does that hold or not because that does not hold very 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 likely that this thing's coming back down to prior lows and probably beyond but that's a you know that's a far cry away um, in this discussion not necessarily too 
too relevant right now, to be honest. Um, but that is, you know, so, uh, something I want to be aware of uh, as we do get closer and closer to taking another weekly off. Uh, we do see weekly stokes getting pretty high, or sorry, not pretty high, but getting out of the bearish control zone for the first time in well over a year, uh, going all the way back to here. This was the last time that we were actually above the bearish control zone. That will confirm um, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that would be certainly a more bullish thing to me. But same sort of signature there. I'm seeing the start. I'm seeing the stokes really rise up, and they're getting towards the edge of the bearish control zone, right? While Bitcoin approaches a major resistance, so that is also a problem in and of itself. I really need to see a breakage of this 4100 resistance, the 200 exponential moving average right here, in order to really be a a, 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 a believer in a more deep run into the 4000s. Make sure that I leave the uh, did I leave the code on? Thank thank God I didn't do that again. Jesus Christ, man, that's so embarrassing. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, if 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 we had a full on run to the weekly twenty one exponential, that would actually you know also make sense as well. That's that's hanging right around uh, forty three hundred to share a little bit of a little bit below forty three hundred. Um, <clears throat> so 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 I do want to show this. I do want to show this, and this is going to be the most bullish thing that you hear me say. But basically. Um, you know, want to keep an open mind. And at the end of the day, this chart right here represents the dollar value of mined coins over the history of Bitcoin. And it's actually perfectly called bottoms thus far. Uh, going back in time, and, I, and I've already kind of charted it out, I put a horizontal support trend line for each and every one of the parabolic runs that creates the support trend line of the next cycle if that makes sense. So basically we have this first run right over here, tops out, put a trend line right there, breaks out of it right over here, bases on it right over here a year later and never goes lower. Has another parabolic cycle right here, comes back down to that next horizontal, bases off here, uh, tests it multiple times over the course of a few years, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, over the course of, yeah, a couple couple years, and then puts in, you know, we, uh, we have another resistance trend line right here from the prior high, breaks out of that, and that becomes perhaps our lows right now. So you can see that we've actually already tested this area. And uh, if, sorry, I should actually overlay a Bitcoin chart so you can directly see how it has called the lows, um, or you can just take my word for it. But here it is. You do see this. Um, well, Bitfinex actually doesn't have enough price action history. Maybe we need to go to Bitstamp now, don't we? Uh, whoops. Oh, you bastard. You bastard. Don't do that right now. There we go. Uh, Bitstamp right here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you kind of you, you, you see it right here with a line chart in the background. <clears throat> um, Bitcoin obviously bottoming out in 2014, 2015 mark cycle right here. The, the mark cycle before that right here. It's actually quite hard to see because it's on linear. And uh, right now... You know, could that have called the bottom? Perhaps, very possible, very, very possible. But also notice in uh, 2014, 2015, this did grind the bottom for, you know, a while. And uh, as you remember in 2014, 2015, right over here, Bitcoin also, the price of Bitcoin also did, did grind that bottom for a while. So, uh, you know, I would I would certainly not put out of question another test of the lows or maybe even slightly lower uh, could make sense. Um, but something to consider, and again, that, you know, I'm always looking for new things to to kind of like temper my own beliefs, because while my belief is that we probably actually do break onto new lows, but that's, you know, this can take a long fucking time. Um, want to be open to something like that. And like I said, I will not take a trade to, the, to I, I will not take a major directional trade to the downside until the 200 simple moon average on the, on the weekly breaks. Um, until, you know, until one of those things happens, whether the 200 symbol breaks the downside or the 200 exponential breaks the upside, uh, this is all just trading supporting resistance within this range. I mean, a massive range. And like I said, it does look a lot more corrective to me in nature on the whole picture because when going over to the higher time frames, we can see that we have this nice orderly drop off in volume as this formation is just very sloppy all around. Um, but hey, <clears throat> If we were to actually break above right here, I mean, this thing's very, I mean, there's there's nothing stopping it to uh, 4150, 4200 perhaps. Uh, I do also want to uh, take take a few seconds on the two-day total time frame right here as uh, we do approach this 50 exponential, which we actually were rejected from on the last two-day total tick. And more importantly, this 50 exponential, this green moving average right here has actually called the last gas of rallies for the past year extremely well. Uh, well, first first things first, we see this one staring us right in the face, you know, hang out above it for just one day and then straight down the next. The time before that was right over here. We were living above the 50 exponential for, you know, a couple of days and then straight down to the bottom side of the range. The time before that was right here uh, on the bull trap to 8,400 and then smash it right back down to the downside of the range. The time before that was right over here in uh, on, on the bull trap to 10,000, getting this last, last gas for air and then 
breaks it and down. And then the time before that was right over here on the double top to 12,000. So it's quite literally got all of the major highs um, since the trend turned around in, uh, in 2018. And the fact is, is that we are flirting around with it right here, right now. So do we get another, you know, another couple uh, ticks above it and uh, and see the same trend emerge? Perhaps, you know, that has been the trend and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So I will I will be running with that assumption until told otherwise. Um, and we and I'd be told otherwise if we made a higher higher for this guy right here, that would be being told told otherwise. <laughs> um, let's see what our also is saying. Uh, two days, two day RSI, not saying anything um, of particular interest. Uh, three day um, RSI. RSI, again, not saying too much of particular interest. Three-day dildo chart in general looks okay. Uh, looks, again, more on the constructive side, I would say. Uh, Three-day stokes are quite interesting to me right here, however, because we are forming a nice trend line that has gotten, once again, all of the highs. And we're getting ever so close right now. And this is called all of the highs since, all of the major highs since December 2017. The high at 20,000. That was your high at 20,000 right there. This was your bull trap May 10,000. This was your bull trap August 8,400. Once again, we are approaching this area, which has been perfect. Even so, we can make another rising trend line from this area and actually it kind of meets up putting downwards pressure on price action. So if I do see the three day stokes start to turn down around in this area, that would be incredibly bearish to me as uh, it would tell me that that trend is still being respected. And, uh, and like we just said, Trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So looking at this, uh, three-day little time frame is, is is interesting to me because we do actually see the red 10 simple moving average quite flaccid. That's the lowest period moving average. So uh, I would expect to see it more erect with the way that price action has been so resilient above this area. Very, 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 very bizarre, actually. Was not expecting to see that. Um, but not definitely not a killing blow in and of itself. So going back to the daily, uh, I do want to check on what the daily oscillators are doing. Daily stokes are down, as we said. Daily stokes are down, which each and every time that they've crossed in this more, you know, in, 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 uh, above this more critical zone, that has actually called extremely good tops for the past over year as well. The same tops that we just saw, you know, do you want to go over them? Basically 12,000, 10,000, 8,400, 7,400. And uh, this one, not so good, but did, did have some movement from uh, from 41 down to uh, 37, but certainly not the same uh, vigor as the rest of them. Uh, daily RSI is actually is actually living above the exponential right now, looking resilient, but there's a lot of day to go. Uh, this would not necessarily look like the best setup to me, actually, because the last run looks like a rejection of getting into the bullish control zone, and right now we're kind of struggling right around there. So today's going to be a long day. Like I said, I'm not interested in having any positions on this weekend. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of uh, fuckery going around, which that's just cryptocurrency, man. That's just magic internet money, you know? You can't you can't hate it. you got to love it. Uh, if you're going to play this game, you accept, you accept the risk or... At least that's what we tell ourselves. Let's go check out where GBDC closed the week at as uh, GBDC closed the week below 480, actually. And again, GBDC looks to me like it put it in the top. I mean, GBDC and CME both look like they are, look like they are tops to me. Um, that could be misconstrued in the wrong ways. Uh, but we do have bearish divergence on, on, on GBDC. One, two, three stabs and back below the exponential. This does. We have not gotten continuation yet. Or sorry, we have gotten continuation off the rejection off the 89 right here, that uh, that long-legged doji dildo. Um, but I want to see more. I want to see those stokes turn around, and I want to see the RSI start trending below the exponential. Right now, it's it is below the exponential, but I want to see it start to trend a little bit. Uh, that would probably come with a you know in confluence with a uh, with a breakage of 466. If that happens, that would be my next big signal for GBDC. Right now, it's quite literally right in the middle. Um, and it does, you know, it does look to me like it has some more downwards pressure. Putting on drawing tools, you can see that we're kind of marking off a nice, massive rising wedge as well with bearish divergence going, you know, between this point and this point. And, uh, and it, but more importantly, the critical levels still apply. 460, I, I guess it's actually 465, uh, 4, 465 actually. If we actually do take out that, that out to the downside, I'll be looking for a full move down here to about 228, or sorry, 428 and a half, which would be very much in confluence with CMEs looking around that 3650-ish area, which would likely imply that spot would, would reach that 3600 number as well, 3650 to 3700-ish area. Um, 
So both CMEs and GBTC, the more professional venues to actually trade Bitcoin right now, I would be more bearish on these charts while Bitcoin over a weekend looks bullish, which to me, typically the weekend is contra direction to the actual next week's direction. More often than not, it has been. Um, so, 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 so that is something I really want to consider. Of course, could this, you know, could this prove me wrong? Yeah, absolutely. If we, if we take back above $5 then fuck yeah. Um, but, uh, but while we're here, let's go check out on the other top shit coins. I'm curious what they're doing. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin, who is actually living right back around that $61 region. As we said, likely to come back up in grind resistances. Uh, does look, I mean, the fact that Mrs. Litecoin is actually taking back or back above six, uh, 60 bucks again, uh, means that this golden cross is going to happen very, very soon, unless if there is a massive bear attack. But to me, this looks like it wants to spend some time here. I would not be surprised if it spends some time, you know, grinding this 60, what is it, $64 resistance, $63.5 resistance, um, basically what we put on the rejection uh, so far. I would still be thinking probably top here. Um, daily stokes are coming down. Daily RSI has major bearish divergence going all the way through. Uh, being quite resilient as well, and it can spend some time. Daily Jewel also getting, well, this high right here, but that I think that trade's already over. You know, a trade down from 61 to 58, 56, not bad. Um, can't get too greedy. Uh, this thing is still crawling its way. So here we're gonna have two competing narratives going on right now, and I'll tell you what. I actually don't want to be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin. And the reason why I don't want to be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin is that if she does get this golden cross, sorry, I should say this first. How, how do I want to realize this concept? Okay, here, here's what I can say. As long as Mrs. Litecoin is above the yellow 21 exponential moving average, I would not be bearish on her at all whatsoever because as long as she rides this above, She's such a good rider. Uh, the golden cross will happen on the daily. That's a 50 exponential and the 200 exponential cross on the upside, which are getting very, very close. And the and the more time that uh, that Mrs. Litecoin hangs above the 21 exponential, the more and more likely that it happens sooner rather than later. And as long as as long as she stays above, it will happen. It's just a matter of time. So that's why it's so critical. And right now, to me, this looks very resilient right here and wants to grind the prior high. Although. I still would be thinking that this is the major resistance that is. Um, a lot of people think that Mrs. Litecoin has, has already broken out the, the 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 crazy resistance. I do not see it that way. I see it right here at 63 and a half coming in from the prior high right there. And more importantly, the daily 377 exponential, which to me is probably the most important one. Um, so again, looking at something like that, it is, you know, it really does kind of bring things full circle. Uh, we have two massive competing narratives, but I would put more weight on the Golden Cross. I would not want, I don't want to be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin if she gets a Golden Cross. And realistically speaking, you know, does Mrs. Litecoin lead the rest of the market to the upside? Very possible. So if Mrs. Litecoin does take out that critical resistance and gets a Golden Cross, I would really start to consider something new is something new is forming something new is forming especially well obviously for mrs Litecoin, but does that have implications for the rest of the market that has been the trend in the past where it does have implications for the rest of the market but first things first actually has to be confirmed so you know 63 and a half resistance is not anything to to balk at it's quite powerful um what else do we have to look at uh you know still in the formation of this rising broadening wedge which is typically a bearish series all pattern as well uh, but like I said, it can grind this area for, for a long time as it has been doing. Um, you do see volume start to fall off on this overall formation. I'd be looking for one more move probably. One more move uh, to meet the vo uh, also the volume moving average, but also the uh, the trend line on this guy. And then I'd be looking for the break. So if the next move is up, that would actually be... Mm, now, you, 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 you can't really say that. I'd actually have to see volume break this and break either the resistance or support. Whichever one happens, that's going to be your next big direction. If it breaks the upside, I'd be looking for a move. I mean, you know, if it breaks the upside, technically I'd be looking for a move to about $69, $70. Uh, great number, but uh, I'd be I wouldn't be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin anymore if that would happen. It, there's there there's no reason to be. Um, from a technical now standpoint, if we break to the downside, if we break um, fifty six dollars to the downside, it's not necessarily bearish even if that happens. And this is what makes Mrs. Litecoin so complicated. She has she she's built up a lot of supports with this uh, more uh, more constructive price action. Um, and really the critical area would be about $52.50. If $52.50 breaks, then yes, I would be more bearish on her, looking for a move down to $44, $44.50, you know, uh, retest this trend line, this rising trend line that's been governing the lows uh, ever since middle of December. And overall, I'd be looking at this whole formation then as a massive rising channel going all the way back on over here, which would imply a more bearish uh, resolution as well. If we actually break $44, I'd be looking for a move back down to the prior lows. 
Um, well, thirty dollars would be would be very likely, and, and prior lows would be, you know, my my personal opinion. Um, anyways, <clears throat> uh, let me get rid of this. So yeah, ve- um, a lot of a, a lot of things to be cognizant of here. But like I said, as long as it's above the twenty one exponential, I would not be bearish. I would not be bearish. Major resistance, however, right here, sixty three and a half. We'll see how it reacts if it you know if it gets there. But it does look like it wants to test it. Uh, let's go look at Mr. Buterall. How's he doing? 139. Again, riding this uh, riding this trend line as well, and the trend line coming in right around the 382 Fibonacci retracement, like the confluence is there. 136 and a half. If that area actually does break, I'd be looking for a move down to you know down to 120 126 and a half, the 0.5 fib. Also, this horizontal trend line, which did hold up the prior low right over here. Um, but like I said, you know, with the rest of the market, I I don't see Mr. Buterall as a leader. He's going to do whatever Mrs. Likewin and Mr. Bitcoin do, and both of those look like they want to give a little bit of a test higher right now. Uh, Mr. Buterall, if he does get going, major resistance right here at 143 and a half. That is a critical one. If 143 and a half is broken to the upside, it would be looking for that move to 152 and a half um, and then probably 162 if that were to happen. Uh, so yes, again, I, I think it's more appropriate to be looking at the other majors, Bitcoin and Mrs. Litecoin, just because they've been, you know, they've been the leaders. Mr. Uh, Mr. Buterall not necessarily getting the price action. It, more sloppy. It's extremely sloppy here. Uh, I would be more bearish on Mr. Buterall overall if I was just looking at Mr. Buterall, although we're not, you know, the, the mark doesn't operate in a vacuum. Daily stokes are down, rejecting the bullish control zone. Daily RSI is mm, uninspiring, I'd say. Quite neutral, but uninspiring. I guess tilting a little bit to the bear side, but not really crazy. Um, daily jewel, completely neutral, which I put way more weight on than the RSI. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd be saying. I, I, I'd be looking at, uh, I, I, I'd be looking at the other ones. If they take a leg up, you're going to see Mr. Buterall test 143 and a half. And if he breaks it, then, then we could actually have a little bit of a party. Uh, but overall, Mr. Buterall, I believe is just forming a massive bear flag actually. Uh, so, you know, this rally could, I mean, shit, I mean, this thing could come all the way up to 183 and a quarter and still not really change around the overall posturing of this. Uh, however, if it does start to take out 183, 185, or sorry, 190 to the upside, uh, that would be a breakage of structure. And to me, that would be bear market overtime uh, for Mr. Buterall if that were to happen. I'm talking a lot of bullish things right now. I have to I have to be very clear with you. I, I, I'm not, I do not believe that the lows are in um, for, for Bitcoin. And does that carry on over to the rest of the market? That's, that's also a question for consideration. I don't know. Um, that has been the trend that everything follows Bitcoin, but we're seeing Mrs. Litecoin uh, lead the market right now. And it is, you know, it is worth considering. And Bitcoin has been following Mrs. Litecoin, so fair enough. Um, okay, cool. All right, so we've talked about all that. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Let's go talk about the other top shit coins. What are they doing? BNB. Uh, BM, oh, my God. BNB, powerful, powerful move here. Very, 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 very good reaction off the 21 exponential. And I'm going to guess that it's just going to catch wind of their overall market strength. We said this yesterday that it was likely to kind of test this area again. Uh, I think I'm going to change my pain on it, though, because while, you know, it is like, I mean, we did get that test of this area again. This is... This is quite a powerful move. Um, I think that is probably going to pop up to the prior high right around $16, actually. Uh, daily stokes are down, but um, the, way that it's, uh, the way that it's been so resilient in this area reminds me a lot of Mrs. Litecoin, which, you know, probably going to pop back up and test this form of support trend line, and I want to see it act as resistance, and that's coming in right, right below $16. Uh, we also do see the same sort of bearish divergence that we see on Mrs. Litecoin getting kicked out of the bullish control zone, just popping back up to test it. I imagine it probably does probably does get rejected. So if I'm looking for trades, well, you can't, we can't short this thing. Um, but hey, by the same point in time, or sorry, by the same token, if this thing takes out $16 to the upside, I mean, that's, uh, that's incredibly bullish. I, in fact, I'd go as far as saying that uh, BNB is the most bullish one. If that were to happen, I'd be looking for a move towards uh, 17 and a quarter all the way up here to the prior high. Um, wow, powerful chart, very powerful. Uh, Zcash, the real Bcash, what's he doing? Uh-oh, back down in to... The descending triangle. Oh man, Zcash just can't catch a break, or Electricorn, or whatever the fuck they call it now. Great name, great name for for a uh, f- uh, for for your beanie baby. Um, sorry, for your highly esteemed third generation blockchain. Uh, daily Stokes down, daily RSI in a rising channel. Actually, not presenting any divergences on a daily. Uh, but more importantly, being you know, it's it, it's no more complicated than this. Resistance right here, fifty six or sorry, sixty dollars. If that gets taken out to the upside, I'd be looking for a move to uh, sixty nine. Uh, by the same token, this is a bearish formation. Typically speaking, doesn't mean it always breaks on to, to the downside, but uh, is riding all the supports right here. Again, 
you know, as long as it's holding above uh, $56, don't want to be too damn bearish on that. If it breaks $56, I'd be looking for a move back down here, or right around 54 and probably test the low side of the range if that were to happen. Bcash, the real Zcash, actually taking a leg up, and again, uh, very uh, a powerful move, actually. This to me looks like it wants continuation, and I'll be looking for continuation here. Uh, there is there is resistance right here, although uh, and and while I would be looking for a sell, uh, maybe for a scalp, uh, this one's starting to look better. Uh, daily Stokes are snaking around, looking weak uh, to the downside. Uh, daily RSI will likely be present uh, presenting some divergences, but you know you just don't know how high it's going to get before that happens. Next resistance right around 176. If that area gets taken out, I'd be looking towards 200. Um, so I'd be looking for trades in that area, but this is starting to look more and more constructive to me, especially in this area right here. That looks okay. Uh, that technically, you know, could you make the argument that this is a uh, cup and handle? You actually could. Let's let, let's do a measure move and see what that comes up with. Oh, look at that, meeting up perfectly with that 200 resistance. So somebody consider if it, you know that's uh, looking okay, looking okay actually. To be fair, uh, Tron Coin again being resilient off the 200 simple. We spoke about how this was you know likely to be bought up yesterday or, in, or a couple of days past, and well we're just getting that right now. But definitely definitely on the weaker side I'd say um, being beheld in below all of the major movement averages not not necessarily a good sign except for the 200 simple, which is supporting price action. I would not be bearish on this thing until it actually breaks the 200 simple at 2.19 uh, cent, basically 2.2 cent. Um, by the same token, if this thing does break out to the upside, I would be looking for a move to uh, uh, not point, uh, sorry, two and a half cent, essentially right over here to the 200 exponential. That's the range and we're, we're quite literally right in the middle of it. So not too many trades to be had, uh, in my opinion. Uh, daily stokes are down, would be bearish off that. Daily RSI is certainly in a more bearish posturing, but, Again, going to follow whatever the rest of the market does, most likely. Neo Cash, uh, nice move over here, actually. So it it did it did break this trend line to the downside, and now we're actually retesting it right now, and uh, so far resisting from it, but very early on in the day. So it's you know anything can happen. Uh, going down to the hourly, you can see a little bit more surgically that uh, this trend line still working pretty well. Uh, coming in right around uh, nine and a half bucks. If nine and a half bucks breaks the upside, I'd be looking for a move. I mean, at the very least, to nine sixty. Uh, but no, that's uh, that's that's a fucking joke. Um, nine eighty would become extremely likely, and uh, at that point in time, I mean, we do have a trend line forming right here, so probably probably ten 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 eighteen ten twenty. 10, 10, 18, 10 20. Uh, EOS Cash, what's EOS Cash doing? Uh, same sort of thing, actually very similar chart to Neo Cash. Uh, broke this rising support trend line to the downside, just came back up and retested it right now. Uh, so far pulling back from it. Uh, but riding the 200 simple right now. So as, as long as it's above the 200, as long as it's above all these major movement averages, I'm not bearish on it. It's, it's not it's not appropriate to be bearish on something like this. Uh, daily stokes are up. Daily RSI is getting out of the bearish control zone and actually breaking the trend as well. I there's actually some some good things going on right here. Uh, if things were to get going to the upside, I'd be looking for 390 to be the next resistance uh, area in the more immediate time frames. Uh, let's go check out uh, Mr. Ripple's nipples over here. Mr. Ripple's nipples, is he still in this ascending triangle? Oh my God, free the nipple! Just can't be done now, can it? Uh, let's go over to the daily. Uh, you can see that this trend line is still holding, still supporting, and as we said before, until this trend line actually breaks, don't want to be taking trades as this thing is ever so close. Yes, it is below all major movement averages, but uh, how many times is it, you know, uh, ridden this trend line road, ridden, ride? Who knows? <laughs> English. It's my first language and my only language, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, potentially seven times. Again, uh, resistance right around uh, 31.8 cent, support right around uh, 30.9 cents, whichever one breaks first. Uh, to the If it breaks the upside, I'd be looking for a move at the very least to 33.5 cent, but probably 34.5 cent most likely. If it breaks to the downside, I'd be looking for a full move down to 29 cent. Um, and this is a critical area as well because uh, it will dictate the pace of the next couple months, I'd imagine. Um, what are also way to say on this guy? Uh, daily stokes are down, uh, rejecting the, uh, the, the bullish control zone as well. Daily RSI is also down as well. I'd say that that is a little bit more of a bearish posturing. Uh, Monero cash. What's Monero cash doing? Ooh, we got some, we got some bearish divergence on the daily hitting a major resistance and down, um, daily stokes down as well. Yeah. I'd probably be looking for, I mean, I would be a little more bearish on this one out of the, out of the majors. It looks like a hunt above resistance right here ever so slightly on extremely low volume and then push right back down below. Uh, did we already see that play out? However, I mean, again, this looks constructive right here. You know, I, 
I have a hard time. I mean, again, it's it's gonna be whatever Bitcoin and but and, and, and Mrs. Litecoin and Buterol do. Uh, Monero doesn't run the market, <clears throat> at least from what I've seen. I've, I've not seen Monero lead, uh, although it is a top market cap coin, and it's and it's actually got some cool things going on. But uh, if you know if, if if Bitcoin takes on to the upside, I'd be looking for a move towards fifty-seven and a half. Uh, but by the same token, as long as we're kind of living below this guy, uh, the direction is uh, fifty-one and a quarter. Uh, stellar, Stellar Cash. Uh, ooh, nice. Getting stonewalled right at this resistance, just like we spoke about yesterday. Uh, grinding the resistance, and uh, we do see our also to start to switch around. Daily stokes are down. Daily RSI is trending below the exponential. And we are in an overall uh, ascending broadening wedge, so I would be more bearish on this one. But again, going to depend on whatever the rest of the market does. If I was just looking at Stellar, I'd be looking for another move back down to low 10 cent region. Uh, by the same token, if 10.9 cents breaks the upside, I'd be looking for that move to 11, uh, two, uh, 11 and a quarter cent right here. So yeah, I think that does it for all them. Uh, SPY is exactly where we spoke about yesterday, back on to the 279-ish area. However, do I think that it bounces here? Well, I don't like to put my opinion on these sorts of things, but I, to me, this actually looks quite damning. Uh, we have major bearish divergence now going on in the daily, uh, training well below the exponential, kicked out of the, like thrown out of the bullish control zone. Uh, daily are, sorry, daily stokes are down as well. Um, and daily jewel is giving a sell down here. Uh, but I really, you know, I, I would be looking for a bounce probably coming into Monday. Uh, if it, if it bounced back up to 281, probably be a seller right there. Um, overall though, would I be bearish on this thing? No, not yet. I'm only bearish on it if it starts to break 275 and a half. Uh, this thing can come all the way back down to 275 and a half, which actually looks pretty fucking likely right now, um, and bounce from there. So I would not, you know, I'd, I'd be a little bit more lean on it. If it breaks 275 and a half, there are supports lower, but I'd start to take on a more bearish, uh, undertone of this. It is interesting to me that, it is interesting to me that, that we see both traditional markets looking a little bit more like this is a major hunt right here. Again, this breakout on very low volume is has been of particular interest just because that's typically when you get your hunts and look at this the highest volume dildo that we see is this massive red dildo bringing us back below that critical 281 support um so we spoke about it coming back down to 279 yesterday it has come back down to 279 but now after looking at it after having some time to digest it, it looks to me like it wants to go lower it looks to me like it does want to test 275 and a half there that's the area that i'll be looking for the real bounce from if it does you know if if that area actually breaks i would start to be more bearish on this and again the most important thing about this is that i see this start to turn around while gbdc and cme for bitcoin both look like they're on the more bearish side as well so obviously these guys all these guys do not trade on the weekends while spot charts look a little bit more resilient maybe looks like they're setting up for a move to the upside right now um i would be looking at the overall picture and saying hey We've seen a lot of confluences between the traditional markets and Bitcoin. In fact, we've seen all the same highs, all the same lows. And if you want to go through it right now, we certainly can. Uh, putting on the compare symbol, uh, let's put on Bit let's overlay Bitcoin in the background. And for the past three three years, uh, Bitcoin has been been very similar to uh, to 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 the traditional markets on the critical moves. We see them both kind of putting their lows in 2015, and then they begin the three year rally leading into 2016 right here. And then they both go up for the next three years, just straight up like from. Uh, you see it from right here. It's kind of hard to judge with Bitcoin because it's on a linear scale right now. Um, but just imagine that it's, you know, it, it's long. It's straight up ever since 2016. Uh, and they both put in their highs around the same time right here in uh, late, uh, sorry, around around the beginning of 2018. Bitcoin a little bit earlier than SPY, but one, once they both put in their highs, they both come down at the same time and put in this first major low, Bitcoin 6,000, SPY right here. Uh, in February, then they both rally up, put in a double top right here, boom, 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 and then back down to the low side of the range, both of them at the exact same time. Then they both rally back up. Bitcoin now goes into a consolidation, a very nasty consolidation sideways to down, whereas SPY consolidates to the upside on extremely low volume. So to me, we're seeing them, we're, we're, we're seeing a divergence in price action, but the feeling is the same. The feeling is the same. And then right after that, Bitcoin breaks down a little bit before spy does but they both break down right at the end of 2018 right here bitcoin puts in its lows about a week before a couple weeks before spy puts in it in right you know right here in december 2018 and uh and then we have another sideways consolidation for bitcoin while spy marches its way up on a very low anemic low volume rally which is what we're seeing right now so are we about to see the same thing you know populate once again perhaps very uh, uh very 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 possible so did want to speak about that um, as I would, you know, personally speaking, I do think that we head on lower on, uh, on traditional markets right now. Um, 
you know, a break a breakage of that critical area uh, in in the way that it did around 281 is not the best sign. Not a killer in and of itself. Breaking 275 would be the killer in my opinion. Um, but uh, I would be switching around my 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 general opinions on it. Anyways, back on to Mr. Bitcoin. Let's go to the four hour. Start to wrap this bitch up because I think it was probably spoken enough. And what do we have? Again, in the more preliminary time frames, uh, this rising channel, or sorry, this rising which is still holding, is still kind of providing uh, the resistance and support. Support right around 39.75, officially speaking. Resistance right around technically uh, 40.64. Uh, more preliminarily speaking, though, there is resistance right at 4,000, where we're, which which we're wedding ourselves into right now. It does look to me like Bitcoin does want to take off here. Um, although it is still grinding this resistance, I'd be using the 12 hour 200 exponential to kind of manage this pawn. If we do close the 200 exponential, uh, sorry, if we do close this next 12 hour in the next four hours and 11 minutes above the 200 exponential, I would be looking for a move towards the prior high and, and test the upside of this resistance. If things get a little bit crazy over there, I'd be looking for the full on uh, retest of this 4110 to 4150 ish area around the, uh, around the former high, which would also come into confluence with the weekly 200 exponential. Keep in mind the posturing between spot and the, and, and, and our CMEs and GBCs coming into the end of the week for right now. That's what I'd be looking at in the lower time frames. If we do break onto the upside, like I said, those targets is what I'd be looking to, towards. If we do break this to the downside, 3950, technically speaking, the measure move would be actually pointing down towards 3800, but be cognizant of the 3900, 30, uh, the, the, the 3900 even support down around here as that is likely to come into play. So uh, again, a complicated weekend, but that's why I like to play options, make it easier on yourself. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Been an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this lovely uh, Saturday. Want to be wishing you another happy and healthy uh, Saturday morning. And uh, take care. I'll see you soon.